Okay, so uh, now we're going to conclude our look at the different types of IMFs or intermolecular forces. Uh, so today we'll be looking at the third type. Uh, we have dispersion, which was the first type we talked about by far the weakest. Occurs in all molecules, but it's the predominant one in um, nonpolar molecules. And then we had dipole, which we just looked at, and that is dipole, dipole. Occurs between polar molecules. Um, um, so, and because it's a permanent polar pole situation, um, th that one's stronger than the dispersion forces. So today we're going to look at really kind of a special dipole-dipole situation, um, and this type is what is called hydrogen bonding. Okay, so th the third type of intermolecular forces is called hydrogen bonding. Uh, it's the strongest of the three types of intermolecular forces, so it's stronger than both dispersion and dipole. Obviously, again, we come into play with the size of the molecule and the degree of polarity. So, but uh, these are this is kind of a, a special relationship in terms of just the strength of this thing. It's still weak compared to an actual bond inside a molecule. So. And on average, like about 5% of a typical covalent bond, although all covalent bonds are not um, the same strength, we just kind of give it a ballpark figure. So it's so a, a normal covalent bond within a molecule is like 20 times stronger than the hydrogen bonding. But uh, it is pretty strong in, in relation to the other types of intermolecular forces. It's similar to dipole-dipole because... These are molecules that do have a permanent positive and negative side. But here we have a situation where hydrogen is bonded to a very electronegative element. And the three elements that we're going to see that actually have or can participate in hydrogen bonding are nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Okay, So if you see those in a molecule that are actually attached or bonded with hydrogen, then that molecule can have what we call hydrogen bonding, okay? So, as I just stated, um, you can't just have hydrogen in the same molecule. The hydrogen has to be bonded to the either the nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine for that molecule to participate in hydrogen bonding. So it can't just be like, oh, there's a hydrogen someplace else and a nitrogen someplace else if the hydrogen's not bonded to the nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, then, you know, it's some other type of intermolecular forces, okay? Now, a very classic example is water. So we're just going to look again real quickly at this. Um, so water is H2O. We kind of more than likely drawn this before, but let's go through the process again. So uh, we have one oxygen in the middle and followed by the two hydrogens on the outside. So there's our initial structure, okay? The oxygen gives us six electrons, and each hydrogen gives us one. Uh, and if you double that, because there's two of them, then you have eight electrons that you need to be able to place in this molecule, okay? So first we bond the oxygen to each of the hydrogens, which uses four electrons. That leaves us with four left, okay? And then since the hydrogens are happy with two, we place the remaining uh, electrons on the oxygen, which gives us oxygen surrounded by eight, and the hydrogens surrounded or have two in, com in uh, combination with the oxygen. So there's our molecule. And then again, we replace the dots with the line attaching the um, hydrogen to the, each of the hydrogens to the oxygen. So there's our H2O. Then we need to remember that this is a horrible picture. Uh, so no matter how you draw it on the board or on a whiteboard or anything else, it's not a good picture. Uh, but this is two bonding and two non-bonding pairs. So that is a bent
tetrahedral. Okay. So because we have two bonding and two non-bonding on the oxygen, it's a bent molecule and a tetrahedral base. But the key is the bent here because bents are not symmetrical. And since this is not symmetrical, that means the molecule is polar. So since the since the bent tetrahedral, it's not symmetrical, uh, so it's a polar molecule. Now, that would more normally mean uh, dipole interactions, but here we have a, one, a special case where hydrogen is bonded to a very electronegative element, in this case oxygen, uh, the second most electronegative element on the table after fluorine. Uh, and so it is a candidate for hydrogen bonding between the molecules of water. Okay, and we'll talk, we're going to talk about the interesting things about water because of this, because based on its size, water at room temperature should be a gas. If you take, if you just took into account that the size of the molecule and not this special hydrogen bonding situation, water should be a gas at room temperature. But um, we are glad that it isn't because if it was, then obviously we would be vaporous because we're, you know, mostly water. So... So that is hydrogen bonding. Uh, remember that when hydrogen bonding, you have to have hydrogen bonded to a very electronegative element. We have three of those, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine are your three candidates uh, for that. So, all right, so those are your three types of uh, intermolecular forces. Just to review real quick, dispersion, the weakest, uh, occurs between all molecules, but it's the predominant one in nonpolar molecules because they don't have any other type. Uh, we then have dipole, which was between polar molecules. And then we have hydrogen bonding, which is a special type of dipole interaction uh, between um, two very, uh, in a, within a, a very polar uh, substance where hydrogen is bonded to a very electronegative element, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So, all right, all set.